This time we'll call the Tuesday, March 8th, 2022 meeting of the Jackson County Board of Supervisors to order. Um, we have Larry McDevitt and myself here in the office and Mike, who was at the sad basketball game last night, but congratulations to the Bellevue Comets. They really played a good game and just came up one basket short, especially when you're playing somebody that's 24 and all. Mm -hmm. Top ranked and Bellevue really gave them a run for their money. So, congratulations to the young men. Mm -hmm. First item on our agenda this morning. Oh, we have Lisa and Bjorn and Luann. And our first appointment this morning is David Dreyer. Good morning. Good morning, David. Good morning. First item on the agenda we have two entrance permits, but we're going to table one as it hasn't uh, been field reviewed yet. And that would be the permit for Victor and Jean Deer. And so our first permit is for AJ Spiegel and Bellevue Township looking for a Class D field entrance, Section 11 on the south side of Seaverding Ridge Road. And we recommend approval of that permit. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the field entrance permit for AJ Spiegel. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. We need to have a motion then at the table to second one. Yeah, I move to table the permit for uh, Victor and Jean Thier. I second that. A second uh, motion and a second to table Victor and Jean Thier's uh, application until next week. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. The big item on the agenda, we had the public hearing for the five-year road plan for secondary roads. Uh, we need to, to submit the plan to the state by mid-April. So we need a uh, approval of the board for that. The one thing that has changed since the presentation that last week was that S bridge number SF 3603 on 184th Avenue and bridge number Iowa 3320 on 17th Avenue were swapped. So the one bridge was moved up to 24. 24. I gotta change the date on that table. And the other one was dropped down to 26. And that was based on uh, bridge inspection that had just come in. Okay, so so the the SF thirty six zero three will be in twenty six. No, no, I swapped them in the table. I forgot to change the the year on there. Oh, we'll say that go twenty four. Yes, and the other one will be twenty six. Yes, so Iowa thirty three twenty will be twenty six. I just copied the lines and switched them and and okay. changed the year. I must say, most of the five year old thing. We have a second. Yes, I'll second that. A motion and a second to approve the five-year road plan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carried. Somewhere in here, I read for the Walmart Bridge Main Street. Mm -hmm. That's for twenty twenty-three. It'll start, it'll start this year. Yeah, this is twenty twenty-two. Right. This twenty-three on the thing. Mistake or yeah, I'm thinking it was. Yeah. Okay. I will correct that too. I didn't know if that was officially. It looked made it sound like it was. No, it says 22. It's starting in June. Okay. Uh, possible action and consideration. This is the additional work that we had been uh, discussed with local funds. And one of the projects that we wanted to tackle was the paving of 35th Street uh, from I Iowa 62 uh, out to the end of the pavement, total length of 1.08 miles. We solicited bids from uh, three companies, River City Paving, Cleasner Construction, and the Nats. River City Paving was the low bidder at 194000 $275.93. The next lowest bid was $271,693.50. 
a difference of $77,417.50. Uh, we originally budgeted $210,000, so it's under budget. And as we narrowed in on constructing the project, the engineer's estimate was $188,000. So we're uh, close to the River City paving number. Uh, it would be 26 wide, 26 feet wide, all pavement markings. And so we recommend uh, approval of that so we can do that this year. I would make a motion to approve the low bid from River City paving. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve River City River, River City paving. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, part of that road is starting to cave off on one side. How do you fix that? You make it wider or just build it up again? It's going to be 26 feet wide. I don't know exactly if that includes any widening. We'll probably just build it up and stabilize the ends. The other uh, project that uh, we want to have approved is some uh, pavement patching. So this includes patching on Caves Road, 199th Avenue, the Hurstville Road bridge approaches, where we have a bump where you hit the end of the bridge. Uh, there's some patching on Iron Bridge doing some patching in Andrew on 150th Street and on 233rd Avenue at Highway 64, paving 150 feet of that off of 64, which is what we would typically do when we take a gravel road to the pavement. The, the grade there is so steep that it's a perpetual maintenance problem. Uh, also have the greater going out, sticking its nose out into the road as it has to maintain that. So getting that piece will be uh, a good thing to do. Uh, the little bit is Kleesner Construction. If we solicited bids for River City Paving, Kleesner, Manats, and Seven Hills Paving. Kleesner Construction was a little bit at $65,986.80. Uh, the next lowest bid was River City Paving at $67,012.92. Budgeted $85,000 for the paving, so we're, we're good there. So we recommend awarding to Cleaver Construction. Make a motion to approve. I would second. Motion and a second to approve the, the bid to Cleaver Construction. All those in favor? Aye. 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 David, I have a question. I believe last year we approved some patching on west of 61 on the Bevy Cascade. Is that correct? And that's yeah. going to be completed before fiscal year? It should, yes. Okay. So it's just getting those the contractor in. I can check with Mike when they, they say they're going to be back. Thank you. Yeah. Some years ago, we looked after that accident on Codfish Hollow Road where the tractor went off. That might be before your time. It was. Um, where that happened, it comes down, down the hill, kind of winds around, it makes a sharp turn around this bluff that's right there. And as you come around that corner, it, it literally drops off probably 20 feet before it starts going down at a really steep angle. That's where the tractor and the wagon with some people on it went off. Is this yeah. by bar, bar store noise? Yeah. Yeah. I know Roger went out. I think I went out with him a couple of maybe Clark. Is it that that hard long ago? Yeah, but they looked at taking some of that bluff off and just moving it over to the other side. The other problem with what's going up and down with the well, they've changed the tractor using a bus now, but there's still hundreds of people that walk the road mm -hmm. along the traffic. So it would it's just a safety issue. I don't think it'd be a big I think they, uh, you know, I've seen the, the bluff and they showed it to me. I, I, it's certainly you can, you know, spend money and, and try to, to cut that down. I don't know if moving it onto the trees on the other side is, is, is the answer. Is the answer just getting it out of there. there. Yeah, yeah I, it probably doesn't need to go any further the other way. That's all there. Just worry about, you know, what it would do to the trees there. Yeah. We'd have to, to get a cost estimate and see what that, that does. Okay. You know, they're starting to book shows for this year. 
Okay. And then the last thing on the agenda, our mechanic is retiring. Started in January 3rd, 2012. He works through the Kokoda shop, Mike Babcock. He's uh, given his last day. So we want to have a motion to accept his retirement and authorize posting internally and externally for filling his position. So moved. Second. A motion and a second to authorize internal and external um, posting for a mechanic. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Aye. How many years did Mike have in, David? Uh, about 10. And he came in 12. Thank you, David. Thank you. Are there any citizens that wish to address the board? Hearing or seeing none, we'll move on to Alyssa Smith. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This Good morning, morning. I to approve the minutes of the March 1st, 2022 board proceedings. As written by Auditor Smith and authorized publication in the official newspapers. Motion to approve. I would second. I have a motion and a second to approve the uh, publication of the minutes of the previous meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. I need a motion to approve a handwritten warrant to the state of Iowa, the Division of Labor, uh, Division of Labor for the elevator permit for $300. Motion to approve. Um, I'm sorry, Larry, did you make a motion? Yes. I would second. And is the elevator all done? And <coughs> no. Okay. We're in the process of the elevator was re inspected in October of uh, 2021, and the work hasn't been completed yet. So that's why the state shut us down. And we're having some issues with the repair company. So we don't know when the elevator will be opened back up. Okay. So we're paying for another inspection and we haven't done any work. Correct. It doesn't make any sense, does it? No. Uh, what does that do for us, Lisa, for ADA compliant? <laughs> well, we're not. I, I mean, I. We're trying, we've been trying, Marty's been trying to talk to the repair company. It's our understanding there potentially could be some supply issues for parts. Um, I do not, I do not know hundred percent if Marty has contacted the state for us to get an extension. Um, we were given a notice to shut it down for 10 days back in October. And um, when that didn't happen, that's why they walked in last Monday and shut it down. So um trying to visit with the company to get this on you know the fast track to get it repaired so we can get using it again and as of well that was as of yesterday um it's still shut down and we still have questions about the supply of the parts to fix it and it's still about i mean it works don't take i mean it works it's just that it opens or closes too fast i think it is is, is that the understanding that i heard that it like the door closes too yeah. Fast. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing wrong with the elevator except it's missing this um, electronic eye for five thousand dollars. <laughs> lets people in mm -hmm. without closing on them. Yeah. But it would close as soon as it hit something. Sure. It would close. But it's missing the electronic eye. Is what I understand. I I'm not hundred percent on this. So anyway, so, we came to reinspect so, and found out that it wasn't fixed. So that's why they shut us down. Has anybody checked for a broken wire? To well, we've end? talked about it with Marty for a long time. Yes. 
And I can't answer that, Larry, I don't know. I guess in your conversation, would there be a chance that, you know, even like security could accompany someone to man the door per se? Um, um, up until this point, I've let Marty be in charge of this process, but I think I need to make a call out to the state to see if they will allow us an extension. And if possibly, because we have a supply issue for parts, if they would allow us to, to continue operating, um, I think I'll have to call out to the Division of Labor to talk to someone to see if we can get that accomplished. I had two busy. Okay. Yeah, that would probably be better um, yeah. done by you than Marty, I would think. But uh, uh, where are we? Where are we at with the motion here? Um, I, I have it down that that Larry made the motion, you seconded it, and we haven't voted yet. Right. Okay. Okay. All in favor of paying the, the fee for the elevator, all those in favor say aye. Okay. Aye. Aye, motion carried. I also need a motion to accept, place on file, and authorize the chair's signature on the county recorder's report of fees collected for the month of February 2022 in the amount of $56,468.83. Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. And next on my agenda is the uh, liquor licenses. I need a motion to approve the renewal of a Class C liquor license with outdoor service and Sunday sales to Obie's at 3610 173rd Avenue, Wakokana, effective March 1st, 2022 through February 2028, February 28th, 2023. Motion to approve. Second. The motion and a second to approve the glassy liquor license and outdoor sales for um, uh, <coughs> OBs. All mm -hmm. those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. I also need a motion to approve the renewal of a Class E liquor license, a Class C beer permit, a Class B native wine permit with Sunday sales to SNK Gas and Food LLC at 18820 Bellevue Cascade Road, Zwingle. Effective April 15th, 2022 to April 14th, 2023. And just as a point of noting, when I present these liquor licenses to you, they're already approved by the state. So the state, all of that is it's done through the state and you are the final approval. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the licenses for SNK Food LLC. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. So carried. that is actually, I'm sorry, that's actually more than one permit. Yeah. I mean, it's a wine one, it's a beer one, and yes. it's a liquor one. Yes. Yes. So. They apply for individual licenses. Yes. Okay. Correct. And then, <coughs> as we're dealing with my next, uh, our resolutions, I'm going to present resolution number 873. Because we've determined that this will be the Together We Build building, as we all know it as, that this will be a county building. And um, so we now need to follow Iowa law when it comes to this. So today I need a motion to approve resolution number 873-03-08-2022, ordering the construction of the Jackson County Fair and ISU extension, the 4-H Outreach Center, and fixing a date for hearing thereon and taking of bids, therefore, um, I think the bids are going to be opened up. Is it like March 24th? I think is the date. Yes, anyway, we'll have to so, schedule yeah. a we'll, yeah. we'll have to schedule a special meeting right. for that also. I would uh, yeah. So moved. Okay. Second. The motion and a second to approve the last <coughs> resolution. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. I also need a motion to approve resolution number 874-03-08-2022 to approve the state of Iowa community development block grant coronavirus. It is a duplication of benefits, policies, and procedures. Um, is that is that dealing with the Leisure Lake project or no? Yes. No? Yes. Yes. I would uh, make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. My third resolution for today is in a, I need a resol I need a motion to approve resolution number 875-03-08-2022 for an operating transfer moving $3,752.76 from the capital projects fund, the 33,000 fund to the general basic fund 01,000 effective March 8, 2022. And as I've said before, this is because we move money around and <laughs> this is why I need this resolution today. A motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the resolution. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So just a little. Oh, go ahead. Did you vote? Everybody voted. Yeah. Okay. We all said aye. So just as a as a background, um, I sent as I've said before, I've sent everything for our redistricting. Um, our redistricting of your supervisor districts. I sent that to the state of Iowa on December thirtieth. The post office delivered it on January 10th, and late Friday afternoon, March 4th, the state of Iowa notified me that our redistricting has been reviewed by the Secretary of State's office, and that they have approved our, our ordinance pending <laughs> a slight change. What they didn't like is I used township lines I thought that was the clean way. I use township lines to divide districts. Part of the this temporary redistricting committee that met in the basement, and we had public hearings, and it was their decision to use um, because we thought it was easy. We use township lines to divide these districts. Well, the state of Iowa, the Secretary of State's office, disagreed with that, and where they disagreed was in the city of Sprague,ville I, you know, the committee used the township line to divide the district. The Secretary of State's office says that we unnecessarily um, split the town of Sprague,ville and that they've adjusted our boundaries to include Sprague,ville into District 1. So for that, because this is an ordinance, um, it's of the opinion of County Attorney Sarah Davenport that we also now, because it's an ordinance, we need to have a public hearing and then we'll have to pass another ordinance and publish. <laughs> For 14, 14 for 14 people. 14 people, right. That what it adds to district one, is that correct? Or that's yep, correct. It adds 14, 14 to your district. Yes. And we're still in the parameters of yeah, it doesn't because yep. we were we were at zero. We had done it such a good job. We were up 30 and then down 30, so it zeroed out, but <laughs> they didn't like our decision when it comes to the town of Sprague. So with that being in mind. We, I now um, am requesting to set, um, set the date of March 22nd, 2022 at 10, 10 a.m. for a public hearing on proposed ordinance 301 to adjust the boundaries of the supervisor direct, director districts in Jackson County as approved by the Secretary of State. What's the approximate cost of this? Um, publishing everything that goes with it. It'll be a couple of hundred easily. Uh, what do you think? You, easily yeah. yeah it'll be a couple of hundred so just to publish all three newspapers yeah and because i well i preferred to have a colored um i wanted to have a colored map so people but i i looked at one paper and it did not get colored but they had you know distinguished it some other way <laughs> so anyway yeah it's going to cost us because you know in all three newspapers it, mm -hmm. There's a cost to that. So we have to hold a public hearing. We'll have to um, republish everything and then send everything back to the state for their approval. So the state will reimburse us for that, yeah? You're right. Oh, you know it. That, that wasn't, I didn't get that confirmation from my email to them. Yeah. We'll send them an invoice, though. Yeah. yeah. So I just need a motion today to approve the <laughs> public hearing. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to set the public hearing for March 22nd at 10 10 a.m. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. And I know that Heidi is on this morning. So my last item that I have right now is that I would like to have a motion to approve and authorize Auditor Smith to sign a full disclosure dissemination agent agreement between Jackson County and Northland Securities, Inc. 
<laughs> so Heidi, I will let you explain to the board what this means. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Good morning. Good morning. All right, so uh, we have a full disclosure dissemination agent agreement. Um, what this agreement does is when the county uh, went into these bonds that are closing next week, um, in those bonds, it is a requirement from the SEC that you keep investors updated on an annual basis. Um, and there's a rule that the SEC came out with called 15C2-12 um, that says that you will disseminate uh, information annually to the MSRB on updates to the county. Um, Northland has um, a full-time continuing disclosure uh, specialist who does this work. Um, the things that are disseminated, disseminated annually um, are the county's audit. And then also, if you remember when we approved the offering document with the financial statistics and um, valuation updates, it's about a 10 page document that um, we would uh, disseminate an um, annually uh, by June 30th um, each year. Uh, the fee associated with it, um, our standard fee is a thousand um, dollars per year plus two hundred and fifty dollars per issue. Um, the county only has one issue, so the uh, fee annually is one thousand two hundred fifty dollars. And can you tell me how many reports we are completing here? Is this a, a, a normal procedure, like a third party for auditing purposes? Is that what I'm kind of putting together? So um, this rule requires that um, issuers keep investors updated through the SEC. Um, this is a service that Northland provides for our issuers. Um, probably 95% of our uh, customers uh, have us take care of these types of postings and requirements to the website um, for our issuers. Um, uh, you know, just a, a the few that don't um, are, are larger clients that have ex, ex, you know, extensive staffs to take the time to make sure that this is posted appropriately in, in, in the deadlines. So it's a hidden cost. <laughs> yeah. I, here's what I can tell you is that even, and Heidi, you'll, you'll agree with me, we did have to have a local um, enforcement officer, correct? Because we did pass that resolution. Yes. Okay, so we passed that. But I will tell you in many of my conversations that I've had with bond counsel, um, this was a little bit overwhelming about making sure that we've dotted all of our T's and crossed our I's and making sure that we do it in a very timely manner because the penalties, <laughs> I don't think we'd want to deal with that either. And, and you know what? We deal with Emma. And, and and there's all different kinds of SEC and Emma, and you talked about the MR. I mean, there's just, there's just all different kinds of places that we need to make sure that we, because it is a tax exempt bond, okay. um, we need to let our investors know what we're doing and how our financial position is. So getting our audit done in a timely manner is also critical at this point. Okay. They're trying to hammer out our audit right now so we can get done, so we can get it to everybody that needs to look at it. So, um, like I said, they're more of a professional and they know the dates that we need to follow. And I guess I support this idea. I know that there is a cost to the county, but to keep us in line, um, I guess that's the way that I would put it. We certainly need to meet our deadlines and, and do our procedures as we've just seen that now we have to publish again and that's gonna cost us X amount of dollars. So uh, it could be a cost savings to us, not an expense basically. Right. I would I would move to approve uh, this disclosure semin dissemination agent agreement. <coughs> I would second. We have a motion and a second, and um, obviously it's in our best interest to do it. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. And just for myself personally, thank you, <laughs> because it, it is important that we that we uh, do this correctly, and and uh, we do work very closely with Heidi. So, thank you for that. 
And so Heidi, I'm in your neighborhood, you know, I'm not too far away if you're out in Waukee, so I'm a couple <laughs> miles away from there. I'm not far at all. <laughs> no, but uh, I was telling these guys here, uh, we were within probably eight miles of that tornado the other night and didn't realize it, you know? Yeah, it, it got a little dicey, but fortunately it was a little bit south of the Waukee area. Um, yeah. It was quite the storm that way, so, well... Okay. Are we going to see you at ISAC this week? Yes, I will be at ISAC later this week. So I should have I should have some pens and fun things. Oh, maybe some candy. <laughs> we'll stop early. <laughs> now, we'll get there early while you still have caramels. <laughs> Thanks, Heidi. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Talk. We'll talk soon. Sounds good. Yeah. Yep. Bye bye. And that's all that I have for the board today. Thank you. And then I'll just have you wait and we'll do um, David and Kelly first, if that's okay. Sure. Yep. Being joined by Dave Heyer and Kelly Brown. Good morning, lady and gentlemen. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> So where are you, Mike? He's out in Des Moines. In Des Moines? Bellevue played last night. And oh, that's right. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. lost our yeah. one. Oh, my my one point in overtime. Yeah. Oh, uh, what a great thing against the number one seeded. Yeah. Casino. Well, I'm fortunate to have the, our daughter living out here that I don't see very often, so I get to come and see the grandkids and, and I spend a couple of days. I sent my wife home with some friends yesterday and a couple of my grandchildren so she's on her own with a couple of grandchildren while my daughter's on vacation so I'm kind of taking a break here too I guess so <laughs> so don't party too much while she's gone uh, <laughs> good morning I'll, I'll see you guys I'll see you guys later today so yeah, right. yeah. well if you were to recall at our last quarterly update, we talked about the manufacturing 4.0 grant and that um, that small cities could, or I'm sorry, small companies under 75 employees could apply for up to $75,000 and that the larger companies could apply for up to $500,000. So as it turns out, PMW was awarded $75,000 and we were super excited to see that Plastics Unlimited had applied for $475,000 and they were awarded $475,000. Oh, wow. So that was just a great thing for them that'll make a big difference. And Certainly. We were all super excited. So his camera's up there, right? Yes. Yeah. So when we were looking this way, we really need to, okay. <laughs> he's, 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 be, he's looking over your shoulders. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of bears that way, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that was just great, great news. And then speaking of other grants, um, I wanted to thank you for your support of Leisure Lake. I actually had started that grant with the, when I was still at ECIA. And so I had followed its progress through and it's exciting that mm -hmm. They were able to work through all the details of that and so you were comfortable with being the administrative as required you know for that grant to be able to um, be submitted and you know and i think you have another one more additional form that you get to approve yet today and then that would be ready to go and so that's exciting and also just so you know um, preston is applying for a cdbg cd grant for public facilities that Maquoketa YMCA had applied for a CDBG CV public facilities grant. And as you know, we're working through the, um, or may not know, but we're working through a grant for the um, Innovate 120, that's Robert Abbott. And then we're also working for another, we're working through another grant with Robert Abbott for 138 South Main, and that will actually be for housing conversion because he wants to put apartments, <coughs> two apartments in the upper story of that building. So it's good things that are happening for mm -hmm. downtown and yeah. good things that are happening for the county. And then um, just to let you know, we did try to work through something with Sevilla. Um, we had three people that we had contacted, one that we had tried to work through either the housing conversion, housing conversion grant or the CDBG CD grant. Um, that owner just chose to do the work himself and didn't want to go through all the 
federal regulations, which can be understandable because they can be very intimidating at times. And um, but so we did try to work through that, and we also tried to work through something with Bellevue, and we weren't able to get that done either. I mean, and, and again, those were just circumstances where it just wasn't ideal for the owners of those buildings. But, um, and, it, and we also reached out to the rest of the communities just to say, hey, these things are available. If there's anything that we can do, because we wanna make sure that if there's an opportunity that, you know, for sure they take it, if we can make it work, sure. right? So, um, and another exciting new, well, it's not exciting, we're exciting, we're, we're excited, we're hopeful, but uh, we did go through the Great Places redesignation um, submittal for the city of Makokoda, and that was quite the extensive process. And for me, it's, it's learning about being able to go through the process and learning about all of the great things that have happened over the last 10 years, five years, in so much of the county that um, it's very reassuring and you know, we keep kidding Dave that he really can't retire and he keeps telling us that he is but you know he's been the energy as you know oh, behind sure. all of this so but anyway so that application was submitted February 24th um, we did meet a couple times with the grant writer from ECIA who was working on it and then also with John Bird with um, Iowa Economic Development Authority on making sure that we could get any sort of wisdom from him and advice on how to better our chances of being able to receive that redesignation. So, you know, we're hopeful. We think that, or we're very pleased with the progress that's been made. We feel like it has met the goals of the first round and that um, we should- So when those. will you find out about the second round? Well, the anticipation is that sometime in the next month they will be setting up a site visit because it okay. doesn't. Sure. Just, you know, it's not just the paper submittal. Yeah. They want to come out and oh, sure they see do. the community, and we'll have a two-hour period of time to do our dog and pony show yeah. uh, and sell them drunk at the brewery. <laughs> yeah. That's the strategy. Yeah, we, we start there. <laughs> we'll talk. You drink. Yeah. <laughs> and the more you drink, uh, yeah. <laughs> It'll seem like the more we're talking, but, um, <laughs> but so so we're hoping to, to get that invite here soon, and I um, then we'll have to put that whole thing together. And again, it's all about partnerships, collaboration, mm -hmm. which I think we can certainly tell a story uh, about that. The difference between the application this time versus when we did it six years ago, well, a couple of differences. One is that it's going to be a ten-year designation, so that that would be great if we get it. And the other is it's more focused on arts, culture, history than the last time. Uh, they were kind of really playing it loose the last time around when, when we initially got designated. And uh, they were between directors. And so, you know, it was there wasn't a whole lot of organization. Now, of course, they've um, tightened up some of the rules and regulations and their focus uh, as the Department of Cultural Affairs to be more about arts, culture, and history. So, but but again, I think we have a great story to tell, uh, and we have some uh, really active organizations involved in the arts and cultural kinds of things, and certainly in historic rehabilitation uh, kind of thing. So, uh, we'll kind of wait and see on that. So, kind of building on what, what Kelly has already talked about, you know, we've talked about catalyst grants in the past, and and the county's been. Uh, very successful. We've gotten six catalyst grants. So those are $100,000 grants to help with six different building projects in, in the county. Three of those are completed um, and three of them are still in process. So the ones that we're working on trying to complete will, are two in Sabula. One is the Ackerman, what used to be the Ackerman grocery store mm -hmm. and, and renovation of um, apartments on the upper stair story and uh, commercial space on the lower level. We actually had a site visit uh, just a couple of weeks ago from the new um, person who's kind of heading this program, just kind of get a look at it and kind of get a sense of where we're going. We are going to be asking for a, an extension on that one because it was supposed to be completed by June of this year. And, and there's just no way with all the extra things that they found out that had to do, including replacing the roof, as well as um, just contractors and supplies and those kinds of things. So 
just getting the material is a big yeah, deal. Absolutely. Right. But but they were the, the gentleman who came out from the state certainly totally understood all that. And so we're going through that, those steps to make that um, amendment to, to the timeline there. The other two projects, uh, one, one the other one in Sabula is the construction of a new uh, restaurant down in the marina. And they are working still on their design plan. So none, no construction has actually started. However, the other part of that project was removal of the old, what they call the fish shed. Um, and that has been removed. So that part's done. It's just the new construction hasn't quite started yet. And then in Preston, we're working with them on the um, Preston Times building, or what used to be the Preston Times building is not occupiable at this point. So um, we have uh, just gotten estimates, or not seeing a bid on that for last week, and so we're kind of working through that whole thing with the the owner on that project. So the the next thing I wanted to talk a little bit about was uh, kind of housing throughout the county, and uh, as you all know, housing is a critical element of um, trying to recruit workforce, but also to keep people living here. And when we take a look at our population base, um, if we want to maintain or grow our population in Jackson County, we need to have housing options. So I think some really good things have been happening, particularly in the last uh, year or so. You know, and some of this has been in planning for a while, but we're seeing some results now in Makokota. And, and I want to thank the board too for, for their cooperation and working with some of the cities in trying to make some of these developments happen because I know in a couple of them uh, they needed to use a 15-year TIF, TIF which requires the board to uh, approve or sign off and appreciate your support in that. So in Coconut they just approved a 28-lot subdivision and a seven-lot subdivision. Those are the first two new subdivisions in the eight and a half years I've been with uh, Jackson County Economic Alliance. So that that's huge for, for them. And I think it's a, a, a beginning of, of a new era or a chapter here. Um, so, so we'll see some of the work actually being done on those subdivisions as weather permits here. Preston, um, I know some of you were present uh, for their ribbon cutting last fall. They opened up their new subdivision, the Harvest View subdivision. Um, they have 26 new lots. And I think uh, according to the city administrator, they have a couple that are uh, people are nibbling on or are looking at, have interest in. So uh, it'll be fun to see some of the construction starting in, in that development. And in Bellevue, they had a 16 lot a subdivision, which they did not use tax increment on. Um, the Jackson subdivision and um, that, uh, you know, the, the sweet part it, with their project is that all of those lots were sold before they awarded the bid for um, the public infrastructure so yeah it, it's uh, amazing and we're not going to find that everywhere but uh, no. it, it, it did work for them but but the challenge then is that now there are still no lots available for sale other than the ones that are owned by these contractors or developers who i'm sure are going to be putting up houses in the next year or two but um it, so that'll help at, in some regard but as they're looking to the future they have acquired that 53 acre site south of town and so we had a joint meeting with the council and the utility board and their economic development group beta and our office kind of talk about okay how, how do we move forward on this you know it, the, the challenge for them right now is extending water and sewer to that site so it's about a two million dollar estimated cost and um you know the, the council is concerned about investing two million dollars and not having any kind of commitments at, at this point. But what I shared with them is that I had a, a developer who was serious about putting in a senior housing project, uh, independent living, uh, senior housing in Bellevue. But we had no land, you know, and uh, we thought we had a parcel of ground that was going to work and then at the end that fell through. And so uh, uh, he's now looking at a project in Preston, uh, because I had his ear and I said, okay, well, yeah, so we don't have a place in Bellevue, but how about another Jackson County community? So we are still having conversations, discussions. In fact, I just had one yesterday with him as a follow up, and I hope to have at least a letter of interest from him uh, sometime yet this week that we can take to their city council for discussion and consideration on not in their new subdivision, but they acquired another parcel of ground that they didn't really have plans for at this point, but it would be on that site. So, so we're working on lots of different 
on housing on lots of different levels. Uh, the hospital um, reutilization of that site, we're still trying to kind of figure that out, but the closing occurred on Friday. So the, um, the new uh, company, it's an LLC, Grove <laughs> Street Realty Holdings formed in Delaware, which really tells us nothing uh, at this point. But, oh, really? Uh, <laughs> but we, I, I did ask the hospital just this morning if we have the contact for the attorney that they've been dealing with. I mean, we didn't want to mess anything up while they were going through the closing, but we'd like to at least reach out directly to the investor or investors um, and offer our assistance to help them take a look at the opportunities or options for, for that reuse of that site. Workforce is something that you hear a lot about, and you know we continue to take a look at how we can assist our, our local companies and businesses in that. We have um, just established or set a, a career slash hiring fair for April 28th at the fairgrounds here. So hopefully the emails to the local industries will go out yet today or tomorrow for sure um, to invite them to participate in that. Um, and we're, we're working in, in cooperation with the chamber and the community college and um, uh, Iowa Workforce Development to try to pull this all together, but uh, it's a little challenging in our office because uh, in the past few years, Stephanie has kind of really led the charge in that, and we just kind of let her handle it, but uh, obviously she's no longer here with us, yet, but she has uh, agreed to kind of give us some advice and assistance along the way here, and so we will tap into her knowledge to help put this together and let it run as smoothly as possible. We're also working with Cirrus on, uh, and I know that many of you were involved in the surveying of, of, of businesses and industries in the program called IWIN, and their 80-page uh, report was shared with us, their draft was shared with us right around Christmas time, and that we're still having phone conversations with them to talk about exactly how do we share this information with businesses and industries. We've given the full report to a couple of, of our local industries who are desperately looking for additional help, but I don't expect every industry is going to want to read 80 pages of a report. So we're trying to figure out how to get them to read the parts that are pertinent to, to, to them. So we're, we're still working through some of that. As you're aware, um, um, particularly Jack, since he serves on our board, but we've had a contract to do some uh, coaching for the last five years. That contract for Hometown Pride ends at uh, the end of this uh, fiscal year in June. And um, to, a, to a large degree, that's taken up a huge chunk of my time, but has also paid much of my salary also for the last five years. And it was kind of a follow-up to whole, the whole Parks to People initiative. The communities involved from Jones, Jackson, and Butte counties didn't want to dissolve that relationship, that partnership. And at the same time, we were saying we can't continue to provide that kind of assistance and service from our office without some reinvestment from everybody along the way. And so we, we did have a, a contract. Uh, again, the, the state contract was with BCIA. Our contract was as a sub kind of subcontract with NCIA to provide coaching services in Jackson and Jones counties. Um, that expires, uh, as I said, at the end of June. Uh, some of the communities like McCogan and Bellevue have kind of figured out their transition plan and how they plan to move forward uh, to carry on some of what we're doing, but it won't necessarily be under hometown pride. Um, and uh, Preston and Sabula have expressed an interest to continue on, and ECIA is working with them and, uh, to try to find a way to continue to serve them with a coach. Um, at Bellevue and Macopia will probably be doing it without a coach. Uh, and, and, and that was really the kind of intent of this program, is that with five years of coaching, that hopefully they can kind of get off and be on their own and still move forward, but they would know how to, how to do some of these things. So all that's still evolving. We have a few kind of months to kind of wrap it up in um, some of these communities. And we're doing the same kinds of things in Jones County and in Dubuque County cities really were mostly handled by ECIA. I was only called in periodically to assist with them. So we're not heavily involved there. Um, 
Innovate 120, uh, Kelly has already shared uh, with you that we're working with um, the with uh, Robert Abbott on a grant application that we were hoping is going to get submitted yet this week for some major renovations uh, on the inside of that building. Uh, the cost estimates is uh, for the some of the interior, basically the lobby area. Uh, and some of what he's hoping to do is a $750,000, but we're asking for a $500,000 grant to assist with that. Uh, and again, Robert's goal is to make this facility not only a, a huge resource for local businesses and an entre a site for entrepreneurs, uh, also a, a site to partner with a community college on training kinds of things. And some of it that he's doing on his own, as he is right now with some high school students through the Startup 120 program. But um, he, the other, his other goal there it, with this building is to make it the kind of place where you kind of walk into the building and you're just awed by the, the physical appearance of the building and the functionality of it. He's hoping to make it kind of a tech center for a coconut primarily, but uh, Jackson County overall. So we continue to work with, with him on, on that. I think um, Jack's at least aware, but the Lieutenant Governor was in, in Jackson County a few weeks ago. We uh, were contacted by his office saying, hey, the, the Lieutenant Governor would like to stop someplace in Jackson County where might we, uh, you know, or might be a good spot for him to kind of land. So we uh, put together kind of a little itinerary of seven different projects he could visit because he wanted to see something where some state money was maybe involved. Um, and uh, he chose to go to Plastics Unlimited, which ended up being a, a great opportunity for him to see some of the expansion that, that's going on there. And I, I don't know if you're all aware, but they physically expanded their building a couple of years ago. And now they are going to be going through another expansion this year. And we're working with the city on, on, on that whole uh, Thing, but adding another 30,000 square feet because uh, their business has grown so rapidly recently. And, and much of it is due to a contract, a new, a new contract that they have with John Deere. And, and this is just to get, kind of give you a sense of how this works. This is a project that they've been working on research and development, prototypes, and trial air kind of thing for a five year period of time before they got to a product where John, you're saying, yep, this is it. Let's go ahead. And of course, when they say that, then they mean like yesterday. Um, and so they're scrambling to, to, to do that. And uh, Plastics is also scrambling to find enough employees to, to make this happen. They're going to a third shift. And um, you know, they, a year ago had 75 employees and in a couple of months, they expect to be at close to 150 employees, just to kind of give you a sense of how dramatically this is impacting what, what they're doing and, and their abilities. So the grant that Kelly talked about earlier um, for helping with some upgrades of their equipment it is uh, going to be a, a great assistance, and I know they're very appreciative. One last thing that I just want to share uh, before I turn it back to Kelly is that how uh, Jackson County projects were recognized by the Thousand Friends of Iowa at the end of January for some renovation projects that uh, have been completed and all three of those were catalyst projects. So it was the Button Factory in Bellevue and they were re awarded the Best Development Award for Renovated Commercial Space. Um, the 110 South Main or the Makokita Brewing um, Building in, in Makokita was um, best mixed use and Mitchell Maskery was the best renovated residential project um, and it's it's a special award in any regard but when you think that they gave eight awards out statewide this year three of those were in Jackson County I think we can uh, be pretty proud of, of what we're, we're doing particularly as it relates to uh, historic and, uh, reuse of buildings so Kelly. Well, speaking of appreciation, um, and Jack, I need to get with you yet this week, hopefully that we can finalize the date for the appreciation event slash Dave's retirement that he's protesting about. But it's going to happen regardless uh, date for... <laughs> I'm not protesting retirement. 
just wanted to qualify that. He's protesting that he's, he keeps saying, I wish that last part would just go away. As he said, that can't, that needs to be a part of, as we're appreciating that we're appreciating everyone who's made a difference. And it's been, a, been part of the partnership for the last eight and a half years. So um, anyway, that's still on. We're hoping now that looks great to be able to be in person. So um, offshore, graciously accepted our request to delay it and said they would be happy to host. So we'll work through those details. Um, just kind of backtracking a little bit for your, I think everyone, sorry, you're over here. Everyone's aware of, or is involved in some of the projects with the Iowa students with the IISC um, Institute. And Currently, they have, I think, 13 different projects going on. And just last Wednesday, we had seven students from the University of Iowa come over, and they toured Preston, Sabula, and Bellevue. And each, each one of the cities had given us kind of a map and of the highlights of things they wanted them to see so that they could get an idea of the atmosphere and the culture. And their, their task at hand is to come up with a new you know, logo marketing for rebranding of the city. So in order to be able to just kind of deep dive into what each city was about, they came over to tour it. And actually, I think there's five different groups, five or six. So there are five student groups. Five student groups that will be developing proposals for each one of the cities and then competing against each other for which one will ultimately get chosen to be the new brand for the city. So, and again, there's uh, 12 other projects going on. And um, if if they turn out anything like the first half did, I've read through most of those reports, it's pretty impressive what they're able to come up with. So I hope to be able to continue those partnerships in the future and find ways to work through and use those resources. And they're such wonderful young yes. adults. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I've met with the ones from the Historical Society um, on three different occasions. and. They are just, it'd be great to have that much energy. <laughs> well, it's nice to have somebody from the outside to yep. take a look at things with us because sometimes we don't see what's right in front of us mm -hmm. because, we, because we see it every day. But, uh, and, and their expertise, I mean, you know, the way this is set up and, and Kelly's talking about the number of projects, but we're, we're looking at some that are involved with arts, some that are involved with history, some that are involved with engineering, you know, some of that are planning, marketing. So a lot of different departments mm -hmm. within the university that we're being able to tap into um, as part of this. And just as an aside, I was asked to share this information next week when the Iowa City Managers meet in Iowa City and as a part of a panel to talk about uh, our experience in using this program with the University of Iowa. So it's um, being noticed. So well, I know. The first time they came, there was eight plus the two professors, and then they had a tag along. Um, and she was an art major, and she just—I I bet I bet she took two hundred pictures of the limestone kilns. Yeah. Well, they're pretty cool. All all over the place, and it was just so much fun to see how excited they were, and um, just learning about it. And and Bonnie was able to share with them a lot of the pictures from the 1870s. Oh yeah. So they got to see how it, how it was. And um, the one student in particular, he's very excited about trying to recreate some of that atmosphere out there and showed us where he wanted the building to be. And you know, I went up when they had um, the presentation and Larry was big in part of that up with Camp Courageous oh, yeah. with their additional Absolutely. farm that somebody had left them the land and to try and make uh, paths and stuff. The only, <laughs> the only thing I told Bonnie and the Historical Society Board is when they make their final presentation, they also put a price tag on everything yeah. that might be right. maybe not attainable, but there are grants. So, you know, we don't know, but sure. Um, they're really, I mean, I'm so excited to see what they come up with. Well, the seven students that came last week and did the, I'll call it the Jackson County tour of Bellevue, Sabula, and Preston, um, they, they were just odd with this. This is so beautiful around here. You know, I just, uh, 
overwhelmed with uh, what a, a great area was because for most of them it was their first time for Jackson County. So well, these were all civil civil engineer students, and I told them we had an opening next door because <laughs> they're all seniors. I said, you know, if you're here and you really like it, we do have a job application at the courthouse for a, an assistant county engineer. So I don't know. I told that to David. So I don't know if one of them will like us well enough to try to stay around. But we um, have some new apartments in the downtown yeah, too. Wonderful yeah. opportunities here. <laughs> so. I met with three of them yesterday, uh, Tyler, Emily, and Ruby, uh, attorneys, and, and they're doing a plan for the watershed authority. Oh, yeah, and right. And right. had a nice discussion for about 45 minutes. And they're going to just outline what we're doing and <laughs> how legally it falls into everything. So, right. Yeah. It's a great opportunity. For oh, it is. Right. And it's a wonderful program. Between first semester and second semester, <laughs> we are going to end up with 24 projects mm -hmm. in Jackson County. So it's um, well worth our $50,000 investment overall. Well, I told Travis, I says, well, my grandson is an engineer student at, at Iowa State. And his comment to me is, is why the hell did he go there? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I said, I, I, said I, have no, I have no influence in that. Yeah, that's yeah. where he chose to go. He's a junior. Because Kelly does the eye roll from having two that just graduated from Iowa State, a third one who graduated from Iowa State. She might have graduated herself from Iowa State. <laughs> but I'm getting used to the Iowa State bashing around here. But, um, but I can still support the Iowa students. I mean, I, Absolutely. I can still support Iowa City. I think that both of them are great programs. And so just a couple other things, quick follow-up. Um, we are in the final stages of the interviews for the assistant director position, and we should have things finalized and hopefully have something in place by the end of the month. So, and then just lastly, just an FYI that I am attending the Heartland Training for Economic Development, and that's in Missouri the last week of April. Great. And I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to what I'm going to learn as well as networking with a lot of people that are going through the same thing I am so that we can partner and learn off each other and then you know use all of our available resources. You no, know, it's always important to have that meeting of the minds. Right. So and that's it. Does anyone have any questions thank for you us? For your yes, support thank you, thank you, thank you. to our organization. It's critical. Cool. Did you have anything, Mike? I do not. I appreciate the update and uh um I guess on the hiring process uh, you there's uh, good potential there, you feel, Kelly, that? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, I think it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be great. I'll just tell you, this week, I probably will not be able to meet with you. I leave today to go to Des Moines, and I don't get back till Friday night. Okay. I do. Just, well, I mean, just email just about a day, just okay. like, just to make sure, okay. maybe I just check with the calendar to make okay. sure that it's available for you. That's the only thing I needed. Okay, so. that's fine. Okay. I will be there even if I have a conflict. Okay. <laughs> so I just give this to There's the chat, the, the infamous <laughs> chat. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know if I want to give it to Jack, but okay. <laughs> hey, I did have something else I, I wanted to add is that, you know, we did get, we worked with the city of Sevilla on some tip reporting and, and the COVID with some budget things. That there, those were additional resources that we were able to add just from the expertise that we're bringing to the office. And then also, you know, I don't think, I don't know if Heidi's still, Heidi's gone, <laughs> but, um, you know, I work with Heidi at the city of Winterset when I was with Winterset. And, um, you know, I follow the proceedings because I sort of know what's going on. So when I'm watching your meetings and you're thinking, okay, why is she doing that? I'm doing it to keep myself informed, but also I understand, you know, <laughs> and then I know that um, I, they, Mike reached out to me, right, with the CDHNA, and because he knew that I was aware of that in the past and said, hey, does this look good? And he had checked with, you know, a couple of us to make sure that this was consistent. And, and, and so that I appreciate that people understand that I have a lot of other things to offer. I'm still trying to fine tune and learn what I was hired to do. But, you know, there's a lot that our office can bring to help the city and help, help the cities and help the county and so again, thank you for all that you do and thank you for the opportunity to help us help the, the entire county. So likewise. Thank you. And I appreciate, yeah, I appreciate your input on that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I gotta reach out to the experts, you know. 
Appreciate that. Thank you. I won't even touch it, Dave. <laughs> oh, good <laughs> check. It's $3,000. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next we have Luann Gokey, our administrative assistant. Thanks for being flexible. Well, I, I think I bumped you. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, calendar for this week. Um, four o'clock this afternoon is the McCookin River WMA's executive meeting by Zoom, which during, I assume we do it on the road somewhere between here and Des Moines. Um, tomorrow, Wednesday, March 9th at 10 a.m. is a zero to five and 60 minutes meeting um, in it or by Zoom for Jack. Also at 10 a.m. starts the Isaacs County Day at the State Capitol in Des Moines, and that's for all of you. At four o'clock Wednesday afternoon is the Isaac Supervisors Executive Board meeting, also in Des Moines, and that's for Larry. Thursday, March 10th at 7 a.m. is a Bellevue Hometown Pride meeting by Zoom for Mike. From 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Thursday is the Isaac Spring Conference in Des Moines for all of you. And at 10 o'clock that morning, Jack will take a break for the Iowa DHS Council meeting by Zoom. Friday, March 11th, from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. is the final day of the Isaac Spring Conference in Des Moines. On Sunday, March 13th at 2 a.m., everybody remember to, to spring forward on your clocks. Monday, March 14th at 7 a.m. is the Early Childhood Iowa Executive Board meeting um, in it or by Zoom for Jack. At 1.30 p.m. is a Regional Governing Board budget work session, also by Zoom for Jack. Our next regular meeting will be on Tuesday, March 15th at 9 a.m. Um, that evening at 6 o'clock is the Conservation Board meeting in Hurstville. And also at 7 o'clock, the Board of Health meeting in the community room downstairs. Business today, um, I have a reappointment uh, for the Jackson County Week Commissioner. This is an annual appointment. Um, it will expire on February 20, 2023. And um, Jeannie Collins here has agreed to be reappointed. In a motion for that. <coughs> so moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to repeat or re reappoint Jeannie Collins here to the uh, as week commissioner. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Uh, the other business I have is discussion of possible action on the Mississippi Valley Workforce CEO Shared Liability Agreement. Jack, yeah, we that? we had at our last meeting we we made some alterations to. Um, to our um, agreement, and one of them is, um, I have been the Clio since it started, mm -hmm. and um, seems that I'm not going to be around after this year. Um, they are going to make uh, the appointment of the Clio and the Vice Clio instead of Co. It's going to be Vice, and that will be the first meeting at the um, first meeting after the calendar year. So it'll be in February that they'll appoint or elect uh, uh, someone to be the Clio. Um, uh, and we also, this year, um, we did it and um, it was helpful. Um, we sent letters to all of the counties in our eight county region and just basically said, okay, we had 12 meetings this month, this year, your representative came to so many of whatever the number was that they were there. And one of them was only two, but we thought it was important. And they're gonna send those letters out earlier before the appointments are made in January to the boards that people are serving. You know, the one that irritates me the most is we have all of our meetings in Muscatine and the Muscatine representative this whole year has only been to three meetings. And 
his office is right there and it'd be different, but he doesn't even respond <coughs> so he can be excused. Hmm. Just they're all unexcused absences. So would that be Nathan? Oh, could be. <laughs> anyway, so we think it's important that we communicate with the counties and let them know that if somebody isn't participating, that maybe they should consider appointing someone else. And that's well, the do the bylaws state that, Jack? Well, our our agreement says that after three consecutive unexcused absences, we will contact uh, a letter from the CLEO to that board asking them to appoint someone else. Well, I will say this. I would just personally like to thank you for your dedication in that. Uh, I know that's that's not easy either. That's travel. That's a lot of travel for you. And you're passionate about it, and you dedicate a lot of time and effort, and we appreciate that. Thank you. And, we do. and the other, the other thing is, um, it's in accordance with the flexibility of the CEOs and the Iowa workforce. Um, we are going to be having um, a more in, intimate role in the uh, in selecting a physical officer. Mm -hmm. um, they're making applications um, right now. Our physical officer was the Southeast Iowa Community College. Um, they took care of, or no, the Southeast Iowa, like ECIA, they're, they're planners. And um, we, had some, we had some issues with them. And I guess the issues got to be more serious than they wanted to deal with. So they, they, sent a letter saying at such and such a date, they were done. So we read requests for proposals went out and now the CEOs will have an opportunity to meet with Miranda and Phyllis and come up with our recommendation to for the fiscal officer. Because things were not getting, things weren't getting done to the satisfaction of the, of the CEOs. So I think it'll be a, a good thing. So, and that's basically the only things, uh, the agreement shall be effective upon the approval of the Board of Supervisors of each of the member counties. The agreement shall continue until WIOA is rescinded or Mississippi Valley as, a current, as currently designated is, is changed by the governor or upon the CEO's request to amend this agreement at any regularly scheduled meeting. So all we need to have you do is approve it and so that we can submit it back to Miranda so that we know that it's done. Uh, I would make a motion to approve the Workforce CEO Shared Liability Agreement as presented. I would second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Most of the guys are really, really, really committed, but we just have a couple of them that aren't as committed as the rest of them. But well, my 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 last week, last week at our, we talked about <coughs> up and up, up, up at um, RTA um, about the person that I mean never comes oh, yeah. and is running for re-election. We think the people out there ought to know that they're not getting their bang for their buck. So we discussed that with the other two Dubuque supervisors that were there. So how are you going to get that story out? Mm -hmm. so, They've got other issues with him too. And it's just, you know. Well, even when he was chairman of RTA, a couple of times he just zoomed in yeah. and the rest of the times, oh, well. That's neither here nor there. Is there any other business to come before the meeting today? Well, I sure appreciate, yeah, the, the effort that we actually put forward too, you know, and I've, I, I've done <coughs> that with the 911 board and just an update with that a little bit. Uh, that is moving forward as planned. We had a special meeting with all law enforcement agencies about how many radios and the band type of radios that they're ordering. I think we've come to an agreement on that. Um, they are having actually training starts next week, so hopefully everything proceeds as 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 best we we think it will, and then we can implement or work into the process with EMS and fire. So 
it's going to be a wonderful asset to Jackson County to be have that update and uh, it's just work in progress as you know Jack it's been going on a lot of years so it's uh it's it's a good process to move forward with yep that is good you know and that's and that's one of them boards too Jack you know you sit on them and all of a sudden you didn't have any and I said from the get-go if, if you're not interested or don't want to come get somebody else to replace, you know, replace it. This, we need to have input from everybody. And it really works good when you have 10 or 12 of the people there out of 14 or whatever it is, you know? So that's what, that's the purpose of them boards and commissions and whatnot, you know? Well, you don't want the after, <laughs> after attack um, when, their community doesn't maybe get what they wanted because nobody's been there to fight for them. And so it's important, important to be there in person to know what's going on. You can Absolutely. read the minutes, but that doesn't, I mean, it's, that doesn't tell the story. It tells the action you took, but it doesn't tell what led to the action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't come, don't come complain after the, after the decisions made and you weren't there, you know? Absolutely. And these, the, the date on this resolution is right, 2022 20, for the bridge. The one I had on my email said 23. I think some of the Main Street. Bridge. That was past last week. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I was last week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else today? Well, I tell you guys, uh, the roads were a little slushy in the morning yesterday, but yesterday afternoon they were pretty good. So drive safe. We'll do with that. I'd make a motion to adjourn. Second. A motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Gary. Meeting is adjourned.